what what trade rumors in the last I don't know how many years have actually like been one hundred percent accurate? Yeah. Well, how many yeah, times but, were was the media telling us we should trade Carey Price? You know, how many times yeah. should we have you know re done a full rebuild? I think there's a bit of jealousy going on in terms of the very se- the select players that we have on our roster, and you see it every time that all of a sudden, as soon as Nick Suzuki starts to flourish, oh. And I know there's the Pierre-Luc Dubois situation. The timing's perfect to start that controversy. However, Stroke in the Flames, fucking Hockey Night in Canada, they're bringing it up. And I know they have to, but it's like, come on. They hate the fact that we have a good team, believe me. They really do. I, what do you I, I mean that about that? What do you mean by Stroke in the Flames? What were they saying? Oh, like, uh, so Ron McLean, it, to start that segment, it was the Pierre-Luc Dubois segment. You got to talk about yeah, it. Yeah. It's, yeah. So they start it with, um, I think he said, are the Montreal Canadiens going to trade Kokaniemi or Suzuki for Pierre-Luc Dubois? Let's hear what the insiders have. Now, I will give it to Elliot Friedman and Chris Johnson. They shut it down right away, only in terms of saying that it's not going to get done anytime soon. It'll probably happen later. They didn't really say that, no, the Habs are looking to trade these guys. I don't know if they don't they don't know that or not, but I don't know. Come on, that'd be like them coming out and saying, "Oh, Mitch Marner had ninety points last season. Maybe the Leafs should try and, you know, trade him for the hottest topic right now." No, yeah, that's ridiculous. But I, and I mean, there's the French connection with Dubois. But what do you what do you think it would take, Matt? Like, what what do you? The, I mean, I think the whole Nick Suzuki thing came up or came to came to life I guess is because I, I think if you're Columbus if you're Columbus that price tag almost makes sense for a guy of purely Dubois caliber right but an you ideal ask situation, for anything less yeah that's it right so I mean at the end of the day I know you you touched on this in one of your latest videos as well too um, and you said you don't think it would would have been filled to no. um but do you honestly think we have the pieces one to let go and two to, for Columbus to even accept? Uh, maybe I'm, maybe it's just the finished connection for me, but to make it work, I feel like it would have to be cock and the Emmy. Like they're only two years yeah. apart in terms of their development. I think they're a very similar type of player. I think cock and Emmy is a good bet. For any Cock and Yemi plus though, right? Like, and it would be Cock and Yemi plus, right? Yeah. And so oh, yeah. I just don't see how that makes sense for the Habs, especially if we're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. I do think it would make more sense to wait and see what you have. But then by then, if Cock and Yemi either struggles or just has a season that we'd expect of a 20-year-old, then that's not a trade that's going to happen because Columbus mm-hmm. might not make that bet at that point. Um, but – and then Suzuki to me is just an untouchable. So there, I took, if it's Suzuki, there's no deal there. And I could be wrong about that too. Um, and maybe I could see it being maybe Columbus sneakishly really values Dino and think that, thinks they could lock him up. Maybe it could be Dino. But to me, I would love to keep I, – I don't know. It's a really complex situation. I'd love to keep a guy like Dino. I think he has a future with the Habs here, especially in the short term. So – I don't know. And the salary cap implications too, right? Like, yeah. mean, it's got to be Cockney Emmy plus whoever's making four or five million bucks. No? Do we not? Yeah, have exactly. To yeah. He has to be able to have Dubois on the payroll and be able yeah. to eventually pay up for him. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of question marks surrounding it. What, what are your guys' thoughts? John? It ain't happening. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, the only thing that caught my attention was that there were certain people who I respect in the Montreal on the Montreal beat who discussed it as a possibility, you know, and, and it, they didn't just laugh it out of the room. Um, and that in turn caught my attention like that. That's the only thing because, you know, there are certain people like I know I rail on the media a lot and there are countless reasons for why I do that. Let's not kid ourselves, but there are some great men and women who cover the Habs. There are. There really are. You know, like, you know, we've talked to a bunch of them and and I follow a lot of them and, and you know, like I, I I don't pretend to be anything other than I am, which is a fan. And, you know, I, I take my cues from them and, you know, on many issues. And so when I noticed that there were certain, you know, people who were, who were discussing it and, you know, what it might take and I, and how, what it would mean. And is it even possible? And some people were entertaining it. I thought, okay, well, 
I mean, okay, this is interesting, you know, and I, the only thing I'll say is I don't think the fact that he's a local kid, French Canadian kid matters to Bergevin at all. Like, Mm. I don't think he'll bring him here necessarily just because he he's French Canadian, but I also don't think he would say no to bringing him in because he's French Canadian. You know, we discussed this uh, lately on the, I think it was our last episode actually last week. Um, And, you know, we don't have many French Canadian players. Yes, that's true. But Mm. we have two of them and both of them were guys that Bergevin went out and got, you know, via trade. Like he, he made a point of bringing them here and, Deno, it, it kind of blows my mind that Deno doesn't carry that baggage along with him ever. Like, has there ever yeah. been a hint, a whiff of the fact that, you know, he's a local guy that no, like it never. And I, yeah, like, frankly, partly, I'm sure that's due to the fact that he's become such a great player, like for sure. You know what I mean? And, but his expectations yeah. coming in were really low too, in comparison to that Drew. too. That to do, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know, so, but it didn't stop Benjamin from making either of those deals. So like I, I, if he can do it, he'll do it. It is basically, I, Suzuki, though? no, no, no. <laughs> I, not a chance. Like, no, absolutely not. And I, I like to Mike's point, I think the Habs have enough assets to get it done without trading. Suzuki. Exactly. We exactly. have so many strong pieces that, and so many other assets behind that, that Mark Bergevin can just be, just say like, you guys are the ones looking to trade them. So don't come at me telling me what to give you. Mm. I'm in control here. Like I'm the one with 14 picks. I'm the one with one of the best prospect pools in the league. I'm the one with young roster players. So let's. <laughs> no, yeah. exactly. The, the blue jacket, Mike, you were saying to me that the blue cat, blue, blue, oh, Jesus, the blue jackets have no leverage. You know what I mean? Like they just are very little, you know, not, much, yeah. not as much as people think, you know, and, and yeah. And I'll just is the that. one player, the one player, that's all they got. And that he wants right. out. That's right. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I sure. don't know. I mean, they, they just, the Columbus just has like, like Matt said, just that one asset. Right. And, and it's, um, it, and it's a situation where there's, there's, there seems to be a need to get him out of town or there a want to get him out of town. Um, and I don't know. I, I think it's, it's going to be, it already is a messy situation for Columbus. Um, I think anybody, well, let's just talk about the Montreal Canadiens here. I mean, I, I, it's, it's going to get tough in, in order to kind of pull that trigger and make that trade. It's going to get, it, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I can't see it happening. I just really can't see it happening. And like I like Matt mentioned before, Kakaniemi seems to be the one that makes the most sense because, like I said, they're they're within the same age range, um, you know, similar style of player. But again, the salary cap implications for Montreal. What else is leaving? What what else? You know, is it going to be a three way deal? Then you have to start talking about other other things other than just Kakaniemi. You know, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't that I don't even think they would trade Kakaniemi. I mean, this is developments from the last time we recorded our podcast. But, um, I, don't, I honestly don't even think they would trade Kakanyemi. Why go pick up a guy with, what is it, $3 million? When uh, you, can, you can probably sign Kakanyemi for about $2 million, uh, given the number of points that he's put up so far um, coming off of his uh, first um, RFA status. Like, and that, that comes up right away. I don't think, it, the, I don't think Mark Bergevin, you know, we have a cap issue right now. We've created this cap issue that everybody was so long longing for, you know, and, and we, we got to be careful with, and we don't know what, what Kakanyemi's ceiling is. We really don't. Um, the last, last point before I give it to you, John, um, is this that 100% guarantee. This is not going to happen during the regular season if yeah. it happens at all. And the other thing that I wanted to say was, I think this is going to end up being a one for one player deal. Um, and it's not going to be the Montreal Canadiens. Because I honestly think that somehow, some way, Columbus is going to want to fix that that hole that they've created by by giving away their number one center. Or I don't know if he's their number one center, maybe two, but um, they're, they're creating a hole by doing so. And um, unless they have somebody in their prospect pool to cover for that, which it's pretty hard to replace a Pierre-Luc Dubois, um, they need somebody else in there. Uh, is it... Patrick Laine, who 
is having troubles out in, or not having troubles, but you know, there's trade rumors running out in Winnipeg for, I don't know, two years now about him. Uh, but a one for one player deal uh, for a guy like Pierre-Luc Dubois and, and Patrick Laine seems to make sense to me. Um, but who knows what's going to happen? I just don't, I honestly don't think he's coming to Montreal, which is going to lead to why didn't you trade for him? What, you know, bitching about Mark Bergevin not making the deal. And this is how it always happens, you know, people shitting on him for the deal that he didn't make. And they think everything they have set in their mind because it was written on Twitter and everywhere else that, you know, it was a rumor for so long and it doesn't happen. And then they start shitting all over Mark Bergevin for not doing it. And everything that will go wrong, um, you know, we lose a game against Toronto in overtime. They'll bitch about Pierre-Luc Dubois, you know. You know, I'll say, why didn't we trade him? Pierre-Luc Dubois would have fixed that, you know. <laughs> that clip was from my sit-down with the boys from the From Failing Hands podcast. A link to their podcast is down in the description, and if you want to watch uh, my full sit-down with them, that link is down there as well.